Sure. So an official welcome now again from my side. My name is Michaela Sewald and I'm working for Geovil, a company uh, situated in Innsbruck um, in Austria. So all the data that uh, is produced within the global flood monitoring and that was just presented by uh, Christian is accessible for uh, interested and registered users. And there are two main entry points uh, which I will show you how to use today. The first one is a web map service with a temporal uh, daily layers mainly used for visualization purposes. And the second one is a, a web application that is mainly used for the product download and uh, for configurations. Both conf uh, applications are connected to each other. And in the next 15 minutes, uh, more or less, I will guide you through both portals. And we will especially cover the topics, how do I access and visualize the GFM data? How do I download the data? And how do I get notifications on uh, detected flood events? Now let me share my screen. So first, uh, let's begin uh, with the first steps. How do I start? As said, there are two portals that I can use to access the global flood monitoring data. The first one is a web map service via the GLOFAS portal, the global flood awareness system of the G uh, GRC, which includes other services as well, was already mentioned by Peter. And uh, the second one is the global flood monitoring portal that was uh, designed for the purposes of this project. I can sign in and log in via the GLOFAS portal. And if I have already an account uh, and want to use both, uh, both portals, I can use the GLOFAS uh, sign in and login details also for the GFM uh, portal. So there is one login for all components and functionalities of the service. The portals are synchronized in the backends. I will now switch to the uh, presentation mode to prevent problems with internet connectivity, but also to show and highlight some details in the interfaces. Now let's get started with how do I access and visualize the GFM data? Once I'm logged in, I have a portal um, with several thematic services. I hope you can see it here. And first at the very top in the right corner here, you can see a hopefully green warning sign. This indicates that the, the health status of the GFM system and when clicking on it, I can see that the Sentinel-1 data stream, the production of the GFM products, the dissemination system and the API. So all components of the GFM service are working smoothly. In case something is not running as expected, this sign would turn red and this one as well. In this view, everything is working as expected and I can access all services. On the right side here, uh, I can also change the background of the view. I can search for defined uh, place and the flood monitoring button indicates further functions. I will come back to this later. To visualize the GFM services, I open the tab monitoring on the top and I get a list with all the layers that are produced on a daily basis. I can activate and deactivate them for my own purposes. And once activated, I will see them here in the layer overview on the left. Here I can also switch on and off the individual layers. Once activated or switched on, I can see them in this map overview. Also, I can change here the date of the layers by selecting them in the calendar overview. This brings me to an interesting point, the temporal aspect of the GFM service. GFM products are generated on a continuous basis and so is the global daily layer of the service, meaning that there is a daily global layer for all products produced, which is updated on a continuous basis. As soon as a product is ready, it will be ingested, meaning that during the day, the most current layer will be filled up with the incoming data. Now that we know the general setup, let's have a look at the data for a certain flood event. 
Maybe some of you remember that the east coast of Australia has suffered from severe floodings this year. Let's have a look at this in more detail. For the purposes of this webinar, I have selected uh, the 2nd of March, 2022, as I know there has been uh, a flood event detected. As you can see already in the orange boxes, there are sentinel overflights available. So in this case, I will now further zoom in to the east coast of Australia. The more detailed view indicates in orange, in these dashed lines, the sentinel one scenes, and also the timestamp of the overflight as an additional information once I have zoomed in. Since I have already switched on the observed flood extent layer, I can see already the flood extent here on this day. When I'm interested now in more details, I can zoom in further and see the full extent of the flood in this area. Here I'm also visualizing, for example, in uh, dark blue, the reference water mass, indicating the permanent and seasonal water. But I could also switch on any of the other layers. Now, maybe I'm interested in more details of the flood, and I want to see how the flood evolves here in this area. For this purpose, there is another layer available, that is the Sentinel-1 schedule. And this layer tells me the planned overflight of the next three days. So in this case, it would be the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of March. In this example, unfortunately, there is no scheduled overpass within the upcoming three days over the same area. As you can see, I've switched on the Sentinel schedule layer, but no polygon is shown via the web map service over the same area. If I zoom out a bit, I can see the scheduled overflights uh, for the next three days over Australia here. What I can do now is to indicate that I'm interested in this specific area to follow it in the future. For this, let's have a look at this sidebar that I've already mentioned. The button flood, flood monitoring opens further possibilities. For example, to create an area of interest. On this slide, you can see that I have already created some areas that I'm interested in here. And now I will add another one exactly here in uh, New South Wales. So I click on this button and I start drawing the polygon here and click one more time to finalize it. And then I type in the details. I can enter a name for the AOI and a short description and I save it. And now in the sidebar, I can see an additional area of interest named New South Wales. I can show and hide it uh, in the overview, but also edit the drawn polygon. Creating an area of interest now enables me to download the data and to get notifications on future detected flood events. Let's first start with how I can download the data of the GFM service. Again, I use the right sidebar and click on the button GFM download. This directs me now to the GFM portal. I can also directly log into this portal if needed. As you can see, there are the same areas of interest defined, so uh, both portals are connected. I can edit and delete them if needed, and I can also create a new area of interest here by this application. I can search for an address and I can also change uh, the map background. Now let's get back to our use case. For the area of interest, I want to download the data to use it for my own purposes. So in this case, I switch in the navigation bar to the products tab. I select an area of interest. In this case, it is New South Wales. And I can filter my results by indicating a time range, which I will do now. And the load products button starts the search for the files. In this case, there are two of them available. And for the download, now I have several options. I open the product which contains several different layers that have been explained already before. I can visualize them here if needed by clicking on this button. And now I can also download each single layer by clicking on this button on the right. 
I can download this whole suite of layers that form one product. And by clicking on this cloud button, I can download all the products that are shown in this list. The downloaded data is provided in GeoTIFF and GeoJSON format, and I can use it now for my own or any further uh, analysis. Finally, let's see how I get notifications on recent flood events. I can do so in both portals. In the GFM a portal, I can configure and activate, deactivate notifications via the notification manager. And on the top right, I see in green all available notifications for all my areas of interest uh, that I have defined. They are shown in a list that you can see here. I can also show and receive notifications via the Clopus portal. I can activate and deactivate them via this dialog again. And uh, when activated, they will be shown under the tab flood notifications. Here I can also directly navigate to them and with the indication of the recorded date, I can switch easily in the overview to have a look at them. What is important to note here is that the notifications can be seen only for the last seven days. To sum up, within a very short time from having access to the Sentinel data, it is being processed and then visualized for uh, users via these two portals at a global scale. And as you can see, there is a range of uh, possibilities to visualize and also access the data produced within the Global Flood Monitoring Service as a visualization via the GLOFAS, but also as download via the uh, Global Flood Monitoring Portal to be able to process and use the data yourself. All interested users can thus also use the data themselves in any preferred GIS applications. This was now a quick overview on how to access the GFM data and how to use the two uh, portals for these purposes. And with this, I hand over to Peter again.